this is uh, my next thought of how this should work. I've got two boxes here. One is going to have basically the low voltage wiring <clears throat> and the other is going to have the high voltage wiring. And I've made a couple of quick connect disconnects using, uh, first of all, this is a, a six pin trailer hitch connector and this is a seven pin trailer hitch connector so I've got 13 wires that can go in. I had a third one on here like this but I decided I really didn't need that. These things come out relatively easy. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. But but they do slide right out just like that and they'll plug right back in so I can disconnect the box fairly easily the same with this one right here now on the inside of this box take this lid off see I've got my hairball I've got two uh, fuse blocks one will be key switch on will be hot this will be on. This will be hot without key switch on. This is going to be my uh, AC cutoff switch, so that when AC power is uh, applied, it will send a signal to this line right here. It says AC plug in. It'll give me a 12 volt signal there that will turn the hairball off. Also have some fuses here for um, some lines that'll be coming out. There'll be a switch. Uh, I mean a line light coming out for my battery when it's low and for the uh, if there's a problem with the controller it'll do a, a check engine light switch so that's the low voltage wiring and the reason I've separated this is if you look in the uh, Zilla manual it actually recommends that you have a foot space in between your high voltage and low voltage so over here this will be my high voltage. I actually have my contactor here, and there'll be a variety of fuses there that will have my amp meters and bolt meters uh, that will be connected to my shunts. And uh, I've got one shunt here. This large shunt is the one that came with my amp meter, and the other shunt is the one that came with the uh, uh, Expert Pro uh, meter. And so, uh, because I'm not sure, this one's not labeled exactly what it is, I'm going to put both of them in there. I probably could use this one for both. It's a great shunt. I don't know if we'll be able to read that or not. But what it says is 50 millivolts uh, and a 100 amp capable shunt. So this is going to be my setup and I should be able to separate these a little bit but I think just having something in between the two will probably create enough interference so that uh, we won't get line noise this time I'm hoping so okay that's my boxes so far all right this is uh, after I've got everything bolted in and before I take it to paint is what it looks like. I had to uh, rearrange this just a little bit. Notice I moved this shunt over here so I'd have enough room here to actually have a uh, connection. And this line is going to come out this way and come through this hole right here. This one, the uh, most negative line comes in here. And we'll go through this shunt, through this shunt, and back to the most negative aspect of the battery. Most positive aspect of the battery will come in here and go through the contactor. Um, I'm actually going to run my um, charger lines into this also so I can count amp hours going back into the battery. I'll run it uh, back into right here, and as it goes through the shunt, it'll record amp hours going back into the battery. So that's. Uh, what I've got, I have two small holes here. This will be for my 12 volt lines um, coming in. This will actually be for the uh, charger lines. The, I'm sorry, this is actually be the DC to DC converter lines uh, coming out. And this will be for the uh, 
12 volt lines to and the uh, low voltage lines to the shunts. Just to uh, let you see, it's relatively level. The uh, not that that matters that much, but you just don't want it to look way out of line, out of square. That's about as good as you're going to be able to get on each end. Okay, I've uh, installed the condenser unit in the front. It's just temporarily installed. I've also added the fan. This is off of a Chrysler minivan, I believe is where it came from. John found it for me. And it had a little reservoir over here I was going to use for the uh, reservoir for the cooling system for the Zilla. However, I can't fit it in because of the uh, power steering, uh, I mean not power steering, but the uh, air conditioning uh, return lines. And there's the air conditioning pump. I've gotten that put in. I've built a bracket today for that. And it should line up alright with the uh, end shaft on the motor. And I've uh, built a little platform here. I've got um, a uh, aluminum plate I'm going to put over the top of this and uh, put all my components on. And I just wanted to update as to what I'd done in the front of the car. I'm also going to have a small radiator sitting up here. This is a uh, actually a heater core that came out of a car, a junk car. I, once again I don't know what model this came out of. It's just a simple heater core and we're going to use this to uh, dissipate the heat from the Zilla. mount that in front of the uh, condenser unit. I've come to a slight impasse in the power steering pump problem. I can turn the ignition on and I get a positive ignition on signal through this red wire right here to the power steering pump. These two wires are the power wires to the power steering mechanism and these are the right and left control wires. These are always hot. These are only uh, hot when the logic board tells the uh, power steering motor to turn on. These four wires here are high speed uh, data wires that come from the uh, engine control module and send out data to the um, actually from the vehicle speed sensor uh, and they it sends data to this uh, logic board that's uh, in here and tells the power steering uh, motor how hard to turn there are also a series of uh, coils on the inside that can pick up and sense the torque that you're putting on the steering wheel and that also gives uh, the motor some data to work with. The problem is I can't recreate this data coming through these lines without the engine running. Uh, it uses the uh, crankshaft uh, position indicator uh, information to determine whether or not the engine is running. If the engine is not running, no data is coming through those lines and the power steering motor won't come on. So if anyone has any ideas of how to spoof that data or any other way to uh, bypass that so I can uh, let the logic board in here do what it's uh, supposed to be doing, please let me know. All right, now I have no idea how to do that. Um, I've thought about uh, finding a reluctor ring and uh, just spinning it with the uh, crankshaft position sensor uh, in place just simulating the motor turning to see if that would work but uh, that seems like a, a long way to go around just to get the power steering to work but I, I may end up having to do something like that I imagine I could put the reluctor ring on the end of the end shaft of the uh, electric motor um, and put the sensors out there but I'll just have to um, I don't know I'll have to see once again if anybody has any ideas please contact me
Thanks, this is James from North Mississippi.